Go to tapgiles.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. In this video, I'll explain all of the puppet's procedural animation settings. These are just the way it walks or runs, and can really bring out the character just by the way the puppet moves. I'm going to go in a bit of a funny order, but it should help you understand how each part is linked to the others. And just so you're aware, this is a puppet with no pose keyframes set up whatsoever. You can set up keyframes to use as poses for different states like walking, running, jumping, etc. But I've got other videos about that kind of thing. So we're just going to see the raw animation the procedural system gives us. First, let's go over to the Behavior tab. At the bottom are a few switches which essentially turn entire parts of the procedural animation on and off. When procedural animation is off, none of the animation will happen. So any setting I talk about in this video will not work unless you have this setting turned on. If you wanted to animate your character completely by yourself, you need to turn this off. But we're going to look at all the procedural stuff, so let's leave it on. When procedural walk is on, the puppet will be procedurally animated. The feet will move to meet the ground, even if the ground is uneven. And when you walk or run, the legs will move and the arms will swing. All that good stuff. You'd want to turn this off if you had your own custom animations for running, for example. Though be aware that if you don't have feet being procedurally animated, some outputs from the puppet interface won't do anything either, like left heel strike and so on. When procedural jump is on, it gives a nice motion to the character while in the air, even without any poses applied. If it's off, the character won't react to being in the air whatsoever, unless you add some pose keyframes, of course. If procedural walk is off, the legs stop working, but the arms will still respond when jumping. This might be useful if you're manually animating the legs, but want the arms and torso to naturally do their thing. I'll leave those both on so we can see the full effect of all these settings. Note that most of this stuff only does anything while it's actually animating the character, as in when they're walking or running or jumping. If they're standing still, the character will go back to its resting idle pose. At the top of this tab, there's the Auto Look setting. When this is on, the puppet's head, as in whatever part is linked to this button here, will turn to look at the imp if it's in front of it. Or if you turn on the Look At switch down here, you can specify the name of a tag to look at instead. Again, if the tag is in front of the puppet's head, but also if the tag is within this radius. You see how the torso as a whole turns to allow the head to more naturally look at the tag? That's because the stiffness of the spine is at zero. If we turn that up, most of the procedural animations won't rotate the joints between the hips and the belly, and between the belly and the chest. So now only the neck up can turn like that. That would be good if you have something like a puppet with no separate belly and chest parts. Something like a hamburger man, for example where the entire torso is just one block and the arms hang out to the sides. Something like that. You want the arms to be in the same spot, but otherwise animate as normal. So you can just turn the stiffness up and now from the hips to the chest is locked in as one. Now let's get into the more animated parts of procedural animation. While playing time, you can actually have the puppet pretend it's walking or jumping or standing idle and change settings while it's going. Very useful for dialing in how you want it to look, without having to play test every 5 seconds. Let's leave it on walking and try out some of the upper body settings. Motion sensor movement isn't really part of procedural animation, but it will use this lean input on the puppet interface to have the head of the puppet lean back and forth. By default, the controller sensor's motion sensor is wired into it, so then if you tilt the controller, the puppet will try to tilt the same way. This lets the player easily express themselves in the game and act as the character, looking around the world and such just with a single tweak. But if you want a more specific experience for the player, or don't want them to worry about sitting straight while playing, you can turn this down. 
and lean lag just below it affects how that works, but it's pretty simple. With a low lean lag, as the head tilts, the body comes with it. With a high lean lag, the body won't come with it until it gets to a certain point. It basically lets you get a crick in the neck before the body will start to tilt. And this affects the auto look setting too. Sassiness gives the walk a little shimmy, or way too much shimmy. To understand what this setting is doing, and you can try this wherever you are, roll your shoulder in a circle. Now roll your entire chest to make that motion with your shoulder instead. And then the hips are rolling, but when the shoulder is down, the hips are up, and vice versa. And all that moves in time with the feet. Sway shifts the hips left when the left foot is stepping, and right when the right foot is stepping. It doesn't affect the feet in any way, this is purely about the hips swaying side to side. Lumberingness is rotating the spine left and right in the same way, and is affected by the back stiffness. Arm vigour is a nice strong walking motion with the arms. They swing forward and back, forward and back, with just a hint of moving out and in at the shoulder. Arm flail boosts that shoulder rotation until you're pretty much just windmilling about the place. Whee! Springiness lets the joints from the hips up flop about, which when subtle can give the limbs a little looseness, which is pretty sweet. Or you can turn it all the way up and become the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing too man. Breathiness is a nice subtle animation to the chest, pulling it back to breathe in and out and in and out. There's no setting for the speed of it, this just sets how pronounced the animation is. If you do have breathiness on, it can look a bit weird if you're running around and jumping and you're just breathing slow and steady as if nothing is happening. So if I have breathiness on a character, I tend to only have it active while not moving around, using some simple logic. For example, you can leave breathiness down most of the time, and then have a keyframe turn up the breathiness, and power it when the puppet is idle, with a signal from the puppet interface. Now I can walk, or run, or jump, and I won't see the breathing, and when I stop, the puppet will transition into that slow in and out breathing. Now let's look at the leg animations. These are a bit more complex and hard to isolate, so they're more difficult to figure out what they actually do. That said, I've done my best to find ways of demonstrating each setting clearly. Now normally, while walking, the feet will sort of lock to the ground properly. The feet won't slide around on the ground, whether you're walking slowly or running fast. Skatiness means when you're accelerating or decelerating, the animation will be slower or have less effect. When it's high, the animation will stay very slow, or at full it won't animate at all. This is like the feet are moving slower than they should. Think about pushing a car. It's really heavy, so while you're slow and accelerating, your feet are moving slow relative to you. This is so they keep their grip on the ground and you can push harder. Then once you've got it rolling, it's easier to keep the car going and your feet can move at normal speed. Whereas slidiness is the opposite. At full, it'll always have the full speed animation, even if you're accelerating or decelerating. Imagine your feet moving so fast they're losing grip, so you're doing a wheel spin essentially, more like a certain hedgehog. This is great for when a character is trying to run on ice and are slipping all over the place. Match floor angle isn't really an animation thing, but it will rotate the whole character, animations, all of it, within the puppet group to match whatever you're standing on. So as you can see here, the purple base is still flat, but the pelvis, feet and so on are all turned to match the angle of the ground it's walking on. So test your character walking up and down hills and see if it makes them look more believable with this setting. Foot separation is how far apart the feet are while walking. Even if you have a pose setting the feet to be wide apart, using a keyframe, if this setting is low, it will pull the feet back together again, into the middle, while walking. So if you want to set that foot pose for your walk or run, you might want to turn foot separation up, so that it works properly. Stridiness is how far the legs stretch out for each step. 
low stridiness means you'll naturally need more of those shorter steps to move the same speed. So the steps themselves will need to be quicker to keep up and take less time to go through each stride, which can look kind of dumb. So we also have this other setting, minimum stride time. If the stride would take less time than that, it will slow down to look more sane. Though as you can see, that can kind of lead to the feet sort of sliding along the ground. Most games have canned animations, which tend to slide here and there anyway, but the player is playing your awesome game, so they probably won't notice too much. Really though, this is sort of a failsafe, to make sure there aren't weird circumstances where their legs are going crazy. When a character moves slowly and moves to the side, the legs can move a lot quicker, which can look strange. Turning up minimum stride time prevents that from happening. For example, when using a first person character, even if the character is invisible, the quicker footstep sounds can still sound weird for the player. So this setting can be used to fix that. Center of gravity moves the puppet's hips up and down. At negative 100%, it will be twice as high above the purple base as it started out. At 100%, it will be all the way down to the purple base, and the legs sort of collapse underneath it. If it's too high, it will not even touch the ground. If it's not low enough though, you'll start to see this kind of popping of the knees as they straighten, trying to reach the ground. So it's usually a good idea to have a few percent positive to get a nice looking walk. And then bounciness sort of animates the hips in the same way, to be that percentage lower while stepping. If you have the puppet sort of walk on the spot with a super low stride, it will be going absolutely crazy but then we can turn up the minimum stride time to get slower little steps on the spot. And now we can better see some more settings. Stompiness is how much the character picks up their feet on each step. And then there's T-Rex tread. Let's leave it off at first. You see how the stompiness brings the feet up quick and then floats down. Quick, slow. T-Rex flips that. So now the foot slowly floats up then slams down. Great for heavy, scary characters, or a toddler stomping their feet. I'll just quickly push the hips up like this, so that we can see what bicycle feet does to the legs as they walk. This makes the curve of the feet more circular. Like when you're riding a bike, the pedals sort of bottom out in a curve. That's how the feet move. They bottom out to touch the ground briefly, instead of sliding along it. Now if you compare that with just stridiness, you can see that the stridiness is more just sliding the feet along in a straight line. Using bicycle feet and bringing the hips up with centre of gravity can really sell the idea that the character is running, as opposed to power walking. One last group of settings to look at are the lean into settings. When a character changes acceleration by starting at a standstill and breaking into a run, Lean into strength will make the character lean in the direction they're trying to run in while accelerating, like a sprinter starting off leaning forward to get going. Then this setting, Anticipate Turn, is similar but for turning. It says how much faster the head should rotate to face the new direction compared to the body, which can really sell the idea that the character is looking where they're headed. Having a better sense of what each of these settings do will help you customise your character's run and walk and give them more personality without needing to hand animate everything. I look forward to seeing your characters. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.